Hi, this is Robert Clickybeard and David Anderson with the Commercial Landscaper Podcast. We're going to take 20 minutes of your life to deliver some amazing business content from our company's leaders to bring you value, to scale your business, and to better yourself personally. And really hopefully you enjoy it. Cheers, everyone. Hi, this is Robert Clickybeard with the Commercial Landscape Podcast. I'm joined today by Jeff Davis. Jeff, thank you for joining me on the show. Yeah, my pleasure. Looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, so uh, we had a quick chat offline there and really uh, interesting topic and very relevant to what I'm currently going through right now. So tell tell my listeners a little bit more about you and your background and just set us off on on that journey. Yeah, I'm a lifelong entrepreneur. I was uh, one of those kids that was coming up with business ideas even in school. Um, When I was into skateboarding, I ended up starting a skateboard company. It's like literally calling cold calling skate shops all over America um, uh, uh, to help pay my way through college. Um, after I graduated, um, I start. I like drawing, uh, like you know, visual drawings, and and so I end up starting a medical legal trial presentation company. Okay. And I, I was like, how can I build a business out of liking to draw stuff? And then so I ended up doing these uh, anatomical and surgical illustrations and visual presentations for lawyers in America. And then I ended up growing that business over an 11 year period from a a studio apartment to uh, law firms in 40 states around the country. um, And then ended up selling that company. Um, And uh, uh, it was along that journey. I'm one of those guys I'll fight like Cal for a dream. I worked really hard. And I worked every night, every weekend, 80 plus hour work weeks constantly. I'd get up, you know, I'd be four in the morning, either coming or going to the office. I'd come home, have dinner, go right back again until, you know, two, three in the morning. It was just ridiculous. Um, and I pressed the gas as hard as I could until I finally burned out, you know, and phys- like physically, you can hear even in my throat now, I end up getting reflux and all kinds of stuff from all the stress and fatigue um and so i don't know how far you want me to go down i can keep explaining yeah. the pain yeah and no, i mean i'd love to hear you know what what was that i suppose that changing moment for you when you decided that enough was enough there must have been some some point which you thought yeah this is not working anymore yeah and keep in mind i'm one of those people like i i only have ever started businesses around something that i was really into into it was a passion but even that, you know, take any passion and you just, it's, it's like the downside of passion is that you care so much that you just do ridiculous things to yourself. You know, as Michael Gerber, who wrote the e says, yeah. you, you know, you, you, you have the um, entrepreneurial seizure and then you go into business for yourself and soon realize you're working for a lunatic. <laughs> um, and so I was definitely that one of those people. And, and so the, the breaking point was, uh, when we had our first baby who's 16 now and um and you know baby's born the next morning i'm so entrenched in the business that i had to go to my office i just was so you know i had no way around i told my wife i'm so sorry i've just got to go i'll be right back and then that turned into hours i had you know staff of employees and i opened my inbox like an idiot and uh it was just terrible you just, and got, just of- got sucked in yeah, got sucked in, uh, and uh, you know, I'm sure business owners know that feeling, or just got all these got a minute questions, and and all the you know. In, anyway, so uh, I just kept grinding it out, and you know, there's there's a limit to how long you want to do that much grinding, and uh, and then I realized it's not even scalable, uh, and so I became obsessed with figuring out how to have a business that could grow and I could actually have a life and even pursue other passions and and do something else after dinner and (laughs) have fun on the weekends, crazy ideas like that. And so I, uh, and so I just became fanatical about it. And I went from working every night, every weekend to 40 hour work weeks to not working Fridays anymore to at the point that I sold my company, I was literally only going there one day a week and not working remotely the other four days, like doing other stuff the other four days. And no, 
That's that's great. I mean, it's interesting you say that because I, I literally just got, I mean, literally within a last day or two, finished reading the Tim Ferriss book, Four Hour Work Week. Mm-hmm. And just again, similar story. Yeah. But, you know, I think, you know, thinking of my listeners, and yeah, a lot of them are got, you know, three, five, 10, 20 million dollar businesses you know they're probably so in the thick of it it's probably even the last thing on their mind right now how, how did you you know how did you start that journey you know you, you said you became obsessed by it but you must be some starting ways in which you could start to reevaluate how you make that transition yeah it, it wasn't like this quick and easy thing i mean i tested and tried all kinds of things and sometimes it would collapse and now i'm spending even more money or now i'm working even more hours or now i'm even 10 times more stressed out because i didn't know i didn't i wasn't you know i was just like well let's see try this and let's see what happens if i do this and you know and uh yeah it was even more painful and even more expensive um and so I mean, one of the big things that I did was uh, just take take the time to actually figure it all out. Like I, I literally drove outside of the city I was living in to a random coffee shop with a hat pulled down and a notepad and a pen, you know, not fancy technology. And I was just like, I'm just gonna sit here for however many hours it takes to write out my plan, like a detailed plan of attack of how I was going to do it. And, um, and like thinking about well, what am I doing? Like, what kinds of, what am I doing all day? What, you know, how am I using my time? And, and, you know, just having a, a real plan that I could hold and look at and keep out on my desk. Right. That was the first, that was the first thing that I did. So, so I want to clarify something. Now, I, I want to see where you were in terms of your journey, because you also mentioned um, about selling your business. Was this before you sold your business or was it after yeah. your business? Or Yeah, it was before I sold my business and partly because I realized that if I didn't figure it out, I wasn't going to be able to sell my business. It wouldn't be a sellable business. And if I was able to sell the business, it was going to be for a big discount because of the key man discount, right? which is, yeah. uh, you know, to the degree that the, the owners involved in that business is the degree less that they're going to get for it. Yeah, and I knew sure. that if, if a buyer could see that I'm only going in there one day a week, uh, it's a lot more attractive. Yeah, it's a lot sure. less risk. No, no, I agree hundred percent. How, um, I'm trying to think uh, the the way in which you did that. I mean, how how much of that came down to use of things like um, virtual assistants, or was it just a case of hiring the right people within your company? What what does what does that look like? All of it, yeah. And virtual assistants, I did have virtual assistants back then, but it wasn't like as easily available and manageable, you know. Uh, whatever that was how many years ago that was compared to now it's just like so easy and so many options um, for communication and and for finding talented people but yeah it was starting to build a team that could you know who could I delegate this to what tools and and training would they need to be successful you know, and, and getting ego out of the way, getting, you know, guilt issues out of the way, getting limiting beliefs out of the way um, that these people could do it. And sometimes they couldn't. My biggest fears were 100% accurate and they did screw it up. But then it was like, well, did they have like really clear checklists? Did they have step-by-step explainer videos that, it, you know, that showed them exactly the way it needs to be done. Do they have, you know, all of that? No, it's uh, all good things. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I use a virtual assistant myself um, and it's, you know, hugely helpful. But, you know, one of the things I, I talk about to a lot of my clients, same sort of conversation where they're working too long and I almost start encouraging them to maybe spend 
you know, an hour or two on a Friday, just block out that time, go somewhere off site, start to make lists. And even, even during the week, have a, like you said, like an old pad on the edge of their desk with some of the things they can start making a list of all the things they can delegate. So it just start, you know, just starts the ball rolling to make them think yeah. differently. And before, yeah, before they even start delegating stuff, what could they just cut out? Does it really add to your profit? Right. Yeah, you've done it for seven years, but do, do you really need to even do it at all? Yeah. Does it really add to the bottom line at the right. end of the day? Or could you yeah. just stop? Yeah. You know, is, is there a technology that can automate in, you know, in, in these modern days of technology, is there, is there a technology that could probably automate that thing that you're still manually doing or somebody in your office is still manually doing? Right. Yeah. That's a good point. No, going back to you know, your original story, I mean, how, how is that starting to affect you? I mean, where did, were you having health issues, relationship issues? I mean, how, how is that all playing into yeah, all of the, it, urge, I, the urgency was, of your Yeah, issue? I mean, I literally, I, I, I had one idea that I, I got no other second opinions. It was like the total opposite of what I live for now is, is this community of entrepreneurs and CEOs and being part of groups with other entrepreneurs that can see you know they have the outside perspective in golf you can't see your own backswing kind of thing and so they, they aren't afraid to, to call you out in a, in a constructive way and and play devil's advocate and say yeah what if this happens and you're like oh i hadn't thought of that yet you know those kinds of, i didn't do any of that yet it is all the dumb hard expensive way and i remember making one decision that i was burning through so much money so fast it seemed like a great idea. I was just having win after win after win. You know, I'd been featured in Fortune Magazine, Inc., uh, you know, put me in an article about smart company builders. And I was like my early 30s um, and uh, in the business journal a lot and all this kind of stuff. And so I had my guns blazing and I was just burning through cash so fast. And I would literally wake up in the middle of the night. I don't only get this for a couple of hours. I'd wake up. And it felt I could feel like all the anxiety just pouring in, remembering, oh crap, that's right, payroll is this Thursday. Oh, you know, feeling that weight, and um, and yeah, I was I was a lot shorter temper with you know with my wife or with my little kids or, or um, and I wasn't even around that much. And then when I was, I was like you know, kind of not focused and I'm trying to pay attention to the soccer game, but right. really like wanting to get back to my laptop, which sucks. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I literally got a reflux in my throat to where uh, my throat was, I kept hoping I was having strep throat. I hope the doctor would tell me that's what, what it was. And, and yeah, so, that's, yeah, yeah it, that's brutal. Yeah. Yeah, and I remember saying one time, and this this in ink, uh, one time too that uh, that whenever I fired somebody, I was doing it so I'd be around for my children a little longer. Like all that stress from this person that's just causing a lot of stress, um, I, I, keeping them around, I'm doing more damage to my body, and just taking away time later in life i'll get to spend my family and i was like screw that and that would be like my little push to, <laughs> yeah. to, to you know like just put an end to it no i mean it's yeah pretty brutal when you start having you know health issues you know family challenges but you, you know you, you definitely seem in a lot better place now i mean what, what before we dive into that part what, what you're doing now but what what are some of the other I suppose, practical ways in which, you know, when owners start listening to this podcast and they start thinking about, well, I'm working 78 hours a week, I'm not engaged with my family, or, you know, I'm, I'm coming in, working all these hours, um, I feel as though I'm indispensable, I need to be there, my, you know, probably an element of ego in there. I mean, what, what other sort of practical ideas you have to sort of, for somebody to really a value where yeah. the rats and yeah, some of the first I mean, steps you be, need to do become a master of delegation it's it's an art and it's a science you know there are particular ways of 
asking somebody to do something like a more skilled way. And, and I, I've been to seminars and workshops on delegation, read books on delegation, had countless hours of conversations with other CEOs on delegation. And, and unfortunately for me, I realized from all that, that it was almost always my fault which was not the answer I was looking for. I was like, yeah, you're, I'm right. This guy is an idiot. But, uh, <laughs> you know, like it, I asked him to do something that should take about 45 minutes and a week later, he still hasn't given it to me. But what I learned was, did I say I need this by tomorrow at 3 p.m.? No, I just assumed it would take 45 minutes where that person might have, you know, received the task and said, yeah, that'll take about 45 minutes, but it'll be about a week before I get to it. You know, it's probably just bad communication. Um, but, but like mastering delegation, actually learning, taking the time to get better at it. Uh, I would say, uh, systematizing your business, your processes, every business has processes and systems, whether they're documented or not, or just kind of in everybody's head, there's a way that everything gets done. And it's just documenting all that stuff into, like I said, screen capture videos or, little um you know charts that show like here is the out kind of the algorithm a process map of how we interview hire and onboard people here's a process map of our lead generation into sales funnel here's a process map of the way that we whatever you know here's the checklist for every time we do this like you know like that's why people pay a lot of money to buy a franchise because they can just follow the recipe and, yeah. and replicate it, you know? Yeah. Um, but ideally when you document and systematize all your processes, you want to do it so that they'll work without you. So as you're documenting the way things are in your business and there you are in your like step two of this process, could somebody else be step two of that process? Could yeah. a technology replace you? Could another person replace you? So you're, you're, you're creating like, like you're going to turn your business into a franchise, but you're creating it so that it could, it could work without you having to be a part of it. Um, and, and, you know, all this kind of stuff that we're talking about, most business owners don't do it because they're so busy doing what they do, making what they make, selling what they sell, that they don't make the time. I, I was going to say they don't have the time, but they don't have the time because they don't make the time to learn all this stuff, to learn how to get better at delegating, to learn what tools are available to automate, to learn how other business owners are being more productive, managing their time, how they're delegating, how they're outsourcing certain roles to, to businesses rather than doing it themselves, you know? Um, and I alluded to it earlier, but I had, I had guilt issues, uh, you know, my own limiting beliefs that most business owners are hard workers and, and we feel like, you know, we need to be the first one and last one out, which I was the same. I was always the first one in my office, always the last one. I wouldn't leave until I heard that last employee's keys jingling, you know, even if I had a very productive day, which was dumb, you know. Uh, business owners, we, we've taken on a lot of risk. We put out a lot of our own money. We were willing to make a lot of sacrifices for this freedom. And then we end up being yeah. like the most insane boss we've ever worked for. Yeah. So, That's so uh, true. <laughs> yeah. And, and so you, so in, in ego is a part of it too. Cause you know, it, I remember a long time ago, when Peyton Manning played for the Colts, they were a great team. Then there was one year he was out the whole season. And I think they lost like every game. It was crazy how they went from so good to so bad. And I'm sure it feels good to be like the star of the team. And when you get injured, they can't do it. But you want the exact opposite of that. You don't, you want a team that could be great. Uh, without you that should feel even better because now you've got freedom now you've built a really scalable business now you've built a business that's worth more money uh, if you were to sell it um and uh and yeah then i mean it's, that's, that's so true i mean I, I almost remember back to some of the conversations i had with my team where i was actually almost doing it them with the save this favor by you know allowing my ego to be that go-to person 
to you know answer all the questions. Whereas in fact, a change. I can't remember what the light bulb moment was fee, but I wanted them to come to me with their solutions and how they were going to re resolve things. It almost allowed them to to develop personally, become better at business, and they went on to become great leaders. Um, but even back to the point you were making earlier. I mean, you touched on videos. I mean, that, that video recording, whether it's a, a, a screen app or whether it's even just your simple phone, a lot of the owners can record themselves explaining something and then just uploading those videos to whatever, yeah, you know, a Dropbox, a Trainual, or, or some other app yeah. out there. Yeah. It doesn't have to be fancy. You're not trying to win an Oscar with this thing. It's going to... They're going to change so much because the technology changes, your processes change. So, you know, it's a waste of time if you're trying to make it look all fancy and corporate right. anyway. You just want something that's really short, really to the point, has a really direct title that people know exactly what they're going to get if they click on that video. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. We, we learned this stuff the hard way. We'd make like a 25 minute long training video that people just needed to find out, like, one quick thing, you know, and they don't want to, <laughs> nobody's going to sit through 25 minutes to try to find that thing, you know, so that we, yeah, better to have what 25 one minute videos, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. um, got to just a, a couple minutes left. So, mm -hmm. you know, as you shared, you're you're currently uh, in Thailand right now, which is pretty impressive. What, what, uh, what are you doing now, and you know, how can people learn about what you're doing? Yeah, um, so uh, I joked that I, I was able to build that business to a sellable company. I sold it. I had the exit, tears of joy, uh, a lot of rum uh, that night, I think. And uh, <laughs> But I joked that I retired for all of about four days because of my inability to sit still. And I had already been just dreaming about starting this community of other like-minded entrepreneurs, business owners, risk takers. We could all help each other avoid some of these costly mistakes and, and you know, uh, leverage each other's knowledge and past experiences and connections and ideas. And, um, and so we started, it's called 12 Mavens. It's a, just a, a community of entrepreneurs and CEOs. They meet in little groups once a month. We've, we've actually got some new things that we're um, offering to, to business owners of, of all sizes. Um, it's going to be pretty exciting. Um, and so, yeah, 12mavens.com okay. is more information about it. Cool. Awesome. And that's just, you know, different uh, owners and different businesses, but they all have yeah, similar, we've, similar challenges. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's been, for the, for the last few years, it's been for, for the founders and CEOs of companies, primarily between $5 million up to $100 million. Um, we're actually, uh, next month, we're having our first uh, over 100 million in revenue only group, which is pretty incredible group of people that, that uh, are, are going to be in that group. But we're also at the same time in the other direction, uh, making a lot of things available for businesses that are scaling up towards 5 million as well. Cool. So, so awesome. we can just, yeah, the right thing for the right person at the right point. Yeah, and they're all, I assume, virtual groups, so they're all yeah, yeah, yeah. They're dialing in from any part of the world. Yeah, and it's, ama yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, you could be sitting on the beach or in the back of a car. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. Anything, last parting uh, words from you, Jeff, for my listeners? Well, since, since this is commercial landscapers, I would tell them that, you know, you can trim those weeds, but get out of the weeds of your own business, you know, if, if you're in the weeds, um, you need to get, you need to take a step back and get out above it. And it's all fixable, any kind of business, any kind of business, you can, you can do all this stuff that we talked about. Yeah, that's awesome. Jeff, I uh, really appreciate your time today. Thank you for sharing. I'm sure, um, yeah, this is probably hitting home to a lot of owners right now who are probably thinking, uh, why am I working so much? Why am I not delegating as much? And, and, spending and more time that, with family? I, yeah, and, and sorry to, to jump in again, but but they were right to work so much. I think it takes that, you know? Uh, it takes hard work to build a business. But after 
you know, you've gotten it from zero to one and then from one to two or three, you know, then, then you owe it to the business, the organization, to the staff, to yourself, your family, to then start chipping away at all the stuff we're talking about. All right. Yep, no, I agree. Cool. Jeff, uh, thank you again for your time. Um, enjoy Thailand. And um, Thanks, man. I'm sure we'll be talking again soon. Thank you. Great. we we'll love it. Hopefully that was pure dead brilliant for you today and you got some great takeaways for your business or for your personal life. This is Robert Clickenbeard along with David Ellenson. I would love to get you and your friends to join us on your journey. If you have any ideas for future speakers or if you just want to pass this on to friends, family, other business colleagues to sign up and subscribe, that would be awesome. Anyway, thanks everyone and have a great 2022. Cheers.